And by everything, I literally mean everything. So, so everything you can experience, whether it is an object or a very subtle abstract state of consciousness or a quality of being, let's say love. Many people are looking to embody the quality of unconditional love. Whatever it is, or it can be a person or a relationship or a fancy car or a fancy house or a state of non-duality or a state of union. Whatever the focus is, whatever the experience is that you're looking for, it is consciousness having an experience of itself at a certain vibratory level, shall we say, or um, a certain frequency of being. So literally everything, the cup you're holding, the ring around your finger, the hair on your head, it's all consisting of a vibration, literally. So since literally everything is vibration, even physical matter, as well as spiritual realizations, we can start to see everything as being essentially neutral and equally valid. So every choice within the broad field of infinite possibilities that consciousness has access to, which is everything, because consciousness is the creator, the generator of all that is. So since consciousness has equal access to any particular reality of its choosing, and all is vibration, and all is the expression of the infinite one, we can start to understand that our biases, that our definitions of what is right and wrong sort of starts to fall away for a second, or forever where we, in a sense, transcend our conditioning, our limited views of what works, what does not work, what we should be focusing on, what we should not be focusing on. And suddenly it becomes this wide field of everything being an equal expression of infinity, because that's what it is. In the eyes of infinity, everything is equally valid. Why? Because everything expresses a particular a portion of all the possibilities in which infinity can express itself. So literally this experience is equally valid to you suffering by yourself in your room or you focusing upon a candle flame or you manifesting the car of your dreams. From the point of view of the one, every single moment that you are experiencing what you could call your life, the one is rejoicing because it sees it as yet another way for it to express itself through you, quote unquote, through your sense of I am. And so everything is equally valid. I share this because in order for us to really gain the freedom of focus, which is very important if you wish to generate the life of your dreams or the life of, of a life of clarity, a life of understanding who you are and being able to utilize that consciously instead of be ruled by all these biases that you've picked up along the way. In order to truly have free will, to truly have freedom of choice, freedom of consciousness, which you essentially do have, but you've given it away to notions and biases, we need to clear out those biases for a moment. You need to not, well, you can have preferences, but you need to not prefer one thing as being better than something else or being a more appropriate expression of infinity. Because infinity, again, does not see that difference. Does that make sense? The fact that the one does not blink at dark or light, does not blink at left or right, it doesn't see a difference. All it sees is more presence of itself. Oh, hey, fun, you're suffering. That's excellent. That's another way within which I can express myself, through which I can express infinite options. Oh, wonderful, you're being in joy. That's excellent. That's another way within which I can express myself, through which I can express myself. So all that you've ever experienced has positively been a contribution to the expansion of creation. So there's no mistakes in that sense. There's no sin. There's no guilt. There's no regret. Of course, you're free to choose the experience of regret, but mechanically, structurally speaking, there is no such thing as sin or regret or guilt. Again, why? Because everything that you've blamed and judged about yourself, the one has never judged that because all it saw was, hey, another perfect expression of who I am. So just let that sink in for a moment. The fact that your entire life has been perfect. Yes, even that moment. <laughs> See, as soon as you focus on what's perfect, as soon as you focus on the vibration of perfection and abundance and truth and freedom and permission and worthiness, the very next thing that comes up right after that is some kind of focus on the opposite, usually. Why? Because heightening your frequency will bring out all the things you hold on to that are not going to be able to live in that next frequency that you've just chosen by placing your consciousness upon an idea that is in a vibratory alignment with the truth of existence.
So as soon as you line up your personal vibration with the vibration of your greater self, which is rooted in infinite possibilities, endless abundance, unconditional love, light, everything is seen as an expression of infinity. As soon as your thinking lines up with that, your feeling will start to feel really good. Because feelings are your barometer for how correct your thinking is, your perspective is, your way of seeing life is. So if you feel really good about what you've just been thinking or how you've been seeing life, that means that you have total permission from the entirety of existence all the way back to the one itself, infinity itself, the ingraspable, the inexperienceable one itself, to continue along that line. In fact, that is preferred. That is universally preferred. That's why it feels good. That's how the feeling works. That's how the emotional body works. That's its only purpose, is to let you know whether or not you're thinking correctly. Sounds a little bit scientific, but that's really all there is to it. If you're thinking in the wrong direction, you'll feel really bad. If you're thinking along the line of sight of your higher self or of creation itself, if your thought process is rooted in the convictions that correspond to the truths of reality itself, you'll feel really, really good. That's just how benign this creation is set up. It's a win-win situation. If you're doing the right thing, you're going to feel really good. If you're doing the wrong thing, not that there is such a thing, but if you're doing something that is actually not in everyone's best interest, you will feel really, really bad. If you're doing something that's in everyone's best interest, even if your mind cannot perceive of how that's going to benefit anyone, it just seems like it's your own pure bliss and you're being selfish. If it makes you feel in genuine bliss, and of course integrity is a part of that, because as soon as you sacrifice your integrity and you try to mess with other people's free will, you will not feel entirely good. You may feel momentary pleasure in your sort of egotistic response to that moment, but something underneath doesn't feel quite right. However, if you, whenever you feel totally holistically pure and blissful, that is surfing, surfing all that is. That is surfing everything. That's how this creation is set up. It's set up in a good way so that when you're doing the right thing, you actually feel good. Whereas most people um, believe, or most religions believe, or many religions believe, that if you're feeling good, you're doing the wrong thing. And if you're feeling good, or sorry, if you're feeling bad, you're somehow being of service. So get rid of that idea, because even if you're not a very religious person, I find that in our collective unconscious, this is a really prominent feeling. So even if you're not brought up with the whole sin idea, you will still find that there is a sense of unworthiness there for you to experience great degrees of bliss. Am I right? Do you ex ever experience this? Yes. So it's just because you have signed up to be portion of this collective. And so you can be of service to everyone by actually lightening that portion of the consciousness, by enlightening that portion of the consciousness, by giving yourself full permission to follow your resonance with integrity, but nevertheless follow your resonance all the way through so that you can open up to that bliss, to that true connection, to that true wisdom, to that true love, so that you feel connected to creation, to all that is. And then you're truly being of service. And then and only then will you have the means and the wisdom to know how to be of service. Does that make sense? So you got to be a little bit selfish if you wish to be selfless. Okay. <laughs>